Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. Today I'm going to look at a paper on urolithin A. Urolithin A improves mitochondrial health, reduces cartilage degeneration, and alleviates pain in osteoarthritis. We will also have a quick review of what urolithin A is and some of the benefits that have been seen with this supplement in humans. Osteoarthritis, a disease which is characterized by the breakdown of cartilage and other joint tissues, affects over 500 million people. It causes severe pain and impaired mobility. Mitochondrial dysfunction is part of the cause, but there are no current interventions. Urolithin A is a natural postbiotic which has been shown to promote mitophagy and mitochondrial health in preclinical and middle-aged and elderly humans. In the study, they showed that urolithin A improved mitophagy and mitochondrial respiration in both healthy individuals and those with osteoarthritis. In vivo, it also slowed progression of the disease in a mouse model, decreasing cartilage degeneration, synovial inflammation, and pain. Overall, showing that urolithin A promotes joint mitochondrial health and alleviates osteoarthritis pathology. Before we get into the paper, what is urolithin A? Let's hear from Dr. Anurag Singh, Chief Scientific Officer at Amazentis, a supplier of urolithin A supplements. We focused on, on pomegranates initially because there is a lot of literature around pomegranates being very beneficial for health and being very rich in polyphenols. And so we started looking at polyphenols that are called as elegitanins. Uh, these are basically elagic acid and punicolagins. And so pomegranates are not the only rich source. There are berries such as raspberries, there's walnuts such as pecans and, and walnuts that are rich in uh, these polyphenols. And so when we started studying these polyphenols, what became very clear to us, uh, you know, most of the, and we focused on, on the aging studies and, you know, looking at uh, both uh, cellular muscle and brain function, what was very clear to us uh, uh, that the health benefits were being derived by the gut microbiome digestion of these polyphenols and the release of a postbiotic that we now call as urolithin A. So postbiotics being, you know, beneficial molecules that are released by the gut microbiome. Here is a diagrammatic summary of the paper. For the way that urolithin A helps with mitochondrial health, another short clip from Dr. Singh. The key feature when we started looking at the muscles, of these different animals and worms was really the impact on mitochondrial health. So this molecule is very unique in that it activates mitophagy. Now for, for, the list, for your listeners, mitophagy is really like a well-conserved uh, cellular recycling pathway, okay? So as we age, our cells accumulate uh, toxic waste, they accumulate free radicals, and, and with aging, this process slows down. And, and what happens, happens is because the cells can clear away the waste, the mitochondria become uh, unhealthy or dysfunctional. And so what this molecule really does is it revs up mitophagy. So, you know, the garbage machinery is much more efficient. And so you're cleaning waste, which basically allows mitochondrial uh, biogenesis down the road to happen and you get much healthy mitochondria. The authors looked at human cells in vitro, both from healthy individuals and those with osteoarthritis. They saw increased metophagy, which led to increased mitochondrial respiration and energy production. The authors also looked at in vivo mouse model, where they fed urolithin A to the mouse after inducing OA in the animals. This led to reduced cartilage degeneration, reduced inflammation, and reduced pain. Before we dive into this paper, let's hear about some of the clinical trials that Dr. Singh's organization has been running. Yeah, so we have published uh, two trials, uh, one in nature metabolism, uh, which was the first in human study showing the safety, uh, showing the different doses, how they improve bioavailability. Uh, and, and then we took muscle biopsies and, and blood to show different mitochondrial biomarkers being improved after four weeks. After this trial, we published uh, another one, the 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 head to head versus the glass of pomegranate juice and, and the showing that uh, you get about a six to seven fold higher bioavailability with, with the supplement compared to diet, for example, so, and the gut microbiome data also was part of it. Now we're about to publish two more trials uh, in leading journals, one in middle-aged population 
showing after four months, we are improving muscle strength significantly and aerobic endurance. And then another one is coming out in older adults, showing that uh, older adults, uh, when they do something like a leg press, uh, they have more resistance to fatigue after being on, on the product versus placebo. So this is coming out and now we have two ongoing studies, one in Australia in elite athletes and one in sort of the immobilized population that I mentioned in Canada. Looking at the results in more detail, starting with an in vitro study on human cell cultures. The first set is from a healthy individual. They looked at the mitochondrial respiration. Mitochondrial respiration is the process of mitochondria using oxygen to create energy in the form of ATP and is a key metric for the health of the mitochondria. They used two concentrations of urolithin A, 6.25 micromolar and 12 micromolar. DMSO is a neutral liquid used as a control. Both the basal and the maximum respiration were increased, though interestingly, the lower concentration actually did better. They also looked at the mechanism of action by examining the activity of the genes being expressed. Part 2 and SQSTM1 are genes related to mitophagy, and in both cases, the lower concentration showed a significant increase in the activation of these genes, showing that urolithin A had increased the mitophagy levels. Now looking at respiration in cell cultures from an individual with osteoarthritis. Again, the respiration was improved, but this time it was dose-dependent, and the 12 micromolar solution had a bigger effect showing that urolithin A may be more effective in diseased rather than healthy joints. Now turn to the in vivo studies, where surgery was performed on both back legs of the mice. One of these surgeries was a sham and should have had no impact. The other would induce osteoarthritis. The mice were then fed with either a control diet or a urolithin A supplementation diet for eight weeks. A note on the dosage. They gave the dose in MPK, which is milligrams per kilogram of chow. So how does this translate into milligrams of urolithin A consumed per mouse? As always, a note that the calculation for dose and human equivalent use the best data that I can find, but there are always a lot of assumptions in them. An average lab mouse will eat three to five grams per day. I've taken four grams for the rest of the calculations. Based on this, the amount of UA in each case would be 0.2 and 1 milligram. The mice used in the trial were four-month-old male C57BL mice. According to the Jackson lab, which supplies this kind of mouse, the average weight of such a mouse is 32 grams. From this, the milligrams per kilogram of body weight is 6.25 and 31.25, respectively. Using the allosteric conversion ratio of 12.3 to 1, this gives the equivalent milligrams per kilogram for humans a 0.51 or 2.54. Hence, a dose of 38 or 190 milligrams per day for a 75 kilogram person. The dose used in urolithin A clinical trials is one gram, and the recommended dose is 500 milligrams per day on the Amazentis website. The OARSI is a test defined by the Osteoarthritis Research Society International, which examines the level of damage to the joint and assigns a score of between 0 and 48. As expected, this increased in the knee surgery group, but there was a significant improvement in the group with surgery and 250 MPK of urolithin A. MMP3 is a blood biomarker related to cartilage degradation and was lower in the 250 MPK group. And as was the loss of cells showing that urolithin A promoted joint cell survival. The final test was for pain response to see if urolithin A would reduce the pain associated with osteoarthritis. The test for this is the von Frey test, which looks for the withdrawal response of the animal when stimulated with a filament of various stiffness. In this case, after eight weeks, the mouse responded less to the thinner filament, implying less sensitivity to the pain. Although we can see with the thicker filament, it did not have a significant improvement. 
Urethane as a promoter of mitophagy is an interesting supplement, which has other beneficial effects as discussed by Dr. Singh previously. It is great that it can also help support the joints in osteoarthritis. Do Not Age has recently released a urolithin A supplement for which you can get a 10% discount with the code Modern Healthspan. Please see the link in the description. Thank you for your attention, and I will speak to you all again soon. Mm-hmm.